go. So we're going to start off with our, um, our first topic, which is TNM stage classification in thoracic malignancies uh, according to the eighth classification. So we're going to start with an introduction, please. Frank, could you come over and uh, introduce the topic? Okay, well, thank you. Stage classification is a fairly uh, basic topic that, uh, you know, is very important to what we do. It really gives us an ability to communicate about the extent of tumor in individual patients. And that also allows us to fit it into a structure that guides us for uh, diagnosis, how we work them up, how we treat patients. Uh, it allows us to describe patients that were uh, included in studies. Um, and to know whether we can apply the data from studies to individual patients. And it helps us to uh, identify prognosis for individual patients as well. But fundamentally, it's a nomenclature, it's a classification to describe the anatomic extent of cancer. Um, now, you know, this is often confused with prognosis, so certainly the extent of cancer is a major factor in people's prognosis, but prognosis depends on all sorts of other things, comorbidities, age, socioeconomic status, what type of treatment the patients get, uh, and sometimes our, our need for a prognostic classification system, I think it's confused with the stage classification system. It's only part of what determines prognosis. Uh, and we often look to what is published in the uh, ISLAC uh, publications for prognosis <clears throat> and apply that to patients. And I think you have to be very careful because what you get from the ISLAC publications is the overall average for a large group of patients diagnosed in 1999 to 2000 and, uh, 2010, so quite a while ago, we have no idea how they were treated, and there's a, actually a lot of variability in that database. And so if you're applying that to individual patients today that you're treating in a very specific way, I think you have to be very careful. So those are really the main points I want to uh, uh, introduce. Um, you know, one other thing of how this was developed, uh, the, is the ISLAC staging committee had to decide how do you decide where to draw the line between different stage classification systems. And the decision was it can't just be prognosis because the prognosis of a certain size tumor, for example, in Asia is not the same as in Europe. Um, but the difference between a three centimeter or two centimeter tumor had to be uh, useful in Asia, uh, useful in Europe, uh, significant in North America, significant for squamous, for adenocarcinoma, and that consistency of that discrimination is really the thing that determined it with a lot of internal and external validation. So just wanted to give a little background, what's behind staging and, uh, and why it's important. Thank you very much, Frank. So now, on with the show. First up, we're going to be asking uh, the Americas to uh, pose their first question. Um, we have decided to organize each topic in subtopics. So each continent uh, will uh, have been assigned a subtopic. The Americas has a subtopic of lung cancer TNM. So please, the America. A 35-year-old never-smoking man has reported a cough for five months and received two courses of medical treatment with antibiotics for a suspected pneumonia during this period. A CT scan showed a five-centimeter lung mass with obstructive pneumonitis of his entire left upper lobe with enlarged lymph nodes in the paraortic station six station um, of 1.5 centimeters in size. Bronchoscopy showed an endobronchial tumor in the left main bronchus two centimeters from the carina pathology confirmed squamous cell carcinoma. PET CT was undertaken, revealing uptake only in the lung mass itself and in the paraaortic lymph node. Brain MRI was negative for metastases. This is a question to Team Europe. What is the correct clinical stage of this patient? 
and here are your options. So you have 30 seconds, and the audience also has 30 seconds to vote. So right, the, the timer at the bottom of the screen gives you your 30 seconds. You've got 20 seconds left. So meanwhile, Europe has to come up with their answer to their discussion. Ten seconds left. All got your apps running. Okay, over to Team Europe to give us their uh, their discussion of this question and their answer, please. Okay, thank you. Uh, so uh, the lung mass is five centimeters large, um, so uh, it should be CT2B because of the diameter, and uh, um, uh, the staging 2B is regardless uh, um, to the distance from the corina. Uh, the evidence of uh, positive PET uh, scan on N2, uh, on uh, sorry, the parotid station uh, means that uh, the clinical stage is N2, and because of the uh, brain MRI negative for brain metastasis, the M is zero. So we think that the correct answer is for uh, CT2B, CN2, CM0, stage 3A. Thank you very much. So Thank Europe you. have given us four as the answer. We'll see later on whether that's the correct answer. Uh, we will now ask uh, um, no, we'll uh, ask you to go on with the scenario and present the second question, please. Our patient underwent neoadjuvant chemotherapy with partial response and was sent to surgical resection and was submitted to a left pneumonectomy. The final pathological report showed a 3.2 centimeter by 2.9 centimeter squamous cell carcinoma with free margins. There were positive lymph nodes at station five, station six, station 10, and station 11. The negative lymph nodes uh, were at station seven, station eight, and station nine. The question to Team Asia was, what is the correct pathological stage and resection status of this patient? Here are your options. Okay, 15 seconds left for the audience to answer, 15 seconds for the team to come up with their answer and their discussion. Finish the voting. Now over to Team Asia for your answer, please. Okay. Um, this patient had the uh, um, size, uh, tumor size of 2A, and he received um, new adjuvant chemotherapy, so it should be YP, and he had um, station 5 and 6 metastasis, so it goes to N2, and we did have a, a surgical margin negative, so it should, the answer would be number 1. So Asia has gone for number one. Uh, we'll be interested to see what the audience comes up with later on uh, when their voting comes through. Um, the, um, and we'll see what the expert has to say later on. Um, what I now want the panel to do, I want the panel starting with Frank uh, to give a score out of 10 for the uh, quality and presentation of the scenario, please. So from Tank, Frank with an eight, we have a nine, we have a nine and seven, Volta gives it a, Volta is giving an, a nine, and uh, they've got an eight. Uh, David's got a six, there's a seven, there's an eight, and you can vote. You, you vote, so we've got an eight and an eight. Okay. So that's for the quality of the scenario. Now for the quality of the discussion from Europe, can we start again with uh, Frank? Right. Oh, this is bias here, 10 and a 10. Uh, Julia is giving a nine, high scores coming through at this stage. Eight, a nine, a 10, a 10, an eight, an eight. We've got a 10, and then from uh, Steve, there's a, a 10. So we've got, we've got all those answers there. You've got them good. That's, uh, and now you have to, you've given very high answers. If you get better answers in the future, you've got, you've got no room, no wiggle room to go any higher. So uh, we're now gonna give the uh, scores for uh, team Asia for the second question. Frank has given a seven, there's an eight. 
Julia is giving an eight. Arvin, eight. Oh, eight's well, all the way through here. Eight again. David's got a seven. There's a nine, a nine, a seven, and a seven. A little bit more conservative at the end there. So um, that's, that's the first round of uh, the scenario. That Now we want to uh, move on to thymic tumors. Um, and uh, we want to bring yeah, Team yeah. Asia. Could you come to the, the dais, please? Can you please come to the podium to present the case? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> bring it down a little bit for you. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So you have to present the case. One minute. Right. Okay, good. Okay. Uh, this is a 56 year old gentleman who has no, never smoked before and he's referred to us for a typical chest pain. Uh, chest tray was as follows. So you can see the uh, abnormality of that. And uh, after chest x-ray, chest CT was undertaken. So he had uh, a mass in the mediastinum and uh, had a bit of calcification there. And um, uh, it looks like uh, invaded to the, the lung possibly. And question to Team America is as follows. And what are the essential elements for the clinical stage for this patient? One is assessment of the CTNM by the CT scan. Two is preoperative histology because CT findings are equivocal. Uh, the three, third, three is a tumor markers. Uh, you should, four is you should forego MRI. Five is you should go FDG PET CT scanning. Thank you very much. So we'll just stand Thank back you. and we'll you now have 30 seconds to get your answers in and 30 seconds for the Americas to come up. Do you want to stay here at the dais in the second bit? Okay, 15 seconds left. Time's up. Uh, time for Team America to give us your answer, please. Uh, we feel the most useful test here is a CT scan for the TNM staging, um, partly because we feel that the preoperative histology is not essential for uh, staging nor are tumor markers. MRI can be useful to help delineate between a T3, T4 lesion in this particular situation, but doesn't help so much in nodal or metastatic stage. And a, the PET CT, again, most helpful really just for looking for metastatic disease. So all up, we think a CT scan can help give you the most information looking at the T stage, the N stage, and the M stage if performed properly. So you're giving number one as your answer. So yeah, answer okay. number one. Right. Okay, now we'll move on. I'll ask you to give the second part of the scenario, please. Okay, we uh, performed CT guided needle biopsy to determine the pathology um, because uh, we might have a germ cell tumor uh, which sometimes needed or, or malignant lymphoma, uh, which can be um, treated by chemotherapy rather than surgery. So that was confirmed as a thymoma. He underwent thymectomy via sternotomy. The tumor involved pericardium and lung and had metastasis in the prepascular lymph node. So question to Team Europe is what is the pathological staging for this patient? Okay. So there's your options. Are you starting uh, the answers now? You've got your 30 seconds. Don't necessarily have to agree with what the Americans said in their first answer. So 15 seconds to go. And voting closes now. Over to Team Europe for your answer, please. Thank you. So uh, because of the invasion of pericardium and the lung, we think that uh, the T stage is four. And because of the involvement of prevascular lymph nodes, the N should be N1. So our answer is three, T4, N1, M0. Thank you very much. You've you got the answer there. So 
You can take a seat. Thank you very much. And now uh, over to our panel, please. So you're now scoring the uh, quality of the scenario as presented by Team Asia. We have a six, a seven, a seven. Arvin gives eight, seven from Volta, eight, a seven, a nine, an eight. Coming up with two eights at the end as well. Got all your answers there? <laughs> and now moving over to uh, your score for the answer from Team Americas, please. There's a seven, a nine. Julia's come up with a seven, seven from Arvin, eight, eight, seven from David, seven, seven, ten, and a nine. Okay. So, right oh. Do we score? Do we score Europe? Oh, answers for Europe. So score from Frank first. Five, a seven, an eight, eight. Come on, Volta, all make up your mind. Eight, a ten, then from Alessandro. Nine from David. Seven, 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 and an eight. A little bit of tactical voting there from the Europeans. Right. Oh, so now we move on to the topic of uh, malignant pleural uh, mesothelioma, uh, and team, in Europe. team Europe. Do you want to join us and uh, present the scenario, please? Thank you. Uh, so this case is about a 68-year-old man who worked as a surveyor in the construction industry in the 70s, and now he's noticing that he's not as fit as his friends in the gym because he's getting breathless sooner and faster than normal. He underwent a chest x-ray and then uh, with the evidence of pleural effusion and then an, ultra an ultrasound guided biopsy uh, of his right pleural effusion revealing epithelioid malignant mesothelioma. He was then referred for a surgical um, evaluation to see if the, uh, his disease was resectable. This is the CT scan showing the extent of the disease at the apex, at the mediastinum level and at the diaphragm level. So my question to Team Asia is, uh, what is the CTNM stage from the CT scan and what are any other further investigations indicated? T3 and 1, the CT scan is enough to consider resection. PET is not useful to exclude mediastinal disease. MRI is necessary for assessing local invasion and a laparoscopy is mandatory to exclude peritoneal involvement. T4 and 1 and 2, the tumor is very bulky. Uh, with the sum of the thicknesses of, at three levels indicating poor prognosis, so systemic chemotherapy is indicated. T4 and 2, the tumor is so advanced that no useful palliation can be achieved with surg surgery or radiotherapy. The patient su should enter a trial to immunotherapy and no further delay to treatment should be uh, done by staging procedures that uh, will not change the treatment or prognosis. As the staging system is different, no decision regarding trial entry or treatment can be made until the pathology demonstrates epithelioid and not biphasic or sarcomatoid pathology. Okay. Sorry. Thank you very much. So time to vote and time to think. So we'll, uh, we'll wait for Team Asia to come up with their answer. Seconds to go. Not any pressure there now. Okay, over to Team Asia for your answer, please. I think the answer is number two because it's the CT scan showed um, the invasion to the neighboring organs, so it should be T4, and we could not clearly see the the exact nodal stagings, but it seems like it also had the invasion to the more than subcarinal sub um, lymph nodes. So it should be um, N1 or 2. And CT scan show the bulky tumor. So we think rather than the surgical treatment, the systemic chemotherapy will be the treatment of choice. So you have gone for answer number two. Okay. That is correct. Okay. So we. Okay. We're now going to move on to the uh, second half of the scenario. Could you present it, please? Yes. Uh, so the patient underwent an MRI, and then uh, he was referred for uh, chemotherapy. After chemotherapy, he underwent um, 
restaging with an MRI, as you can see uh, before and after, and also with a CT scan uh, uh, on the left uh, before treatment and on the right after treatment. The question to Team America is, in view of the response of chemotherapy uh, and a subsequent CT PET showing no peritoneal involvement, what is the new CT and M stage and what treatment should be the patient be offered? T3N1, after such a response to reduction chemotherapy, should be offered a complete resection with extended pleurectomy and decortication. T3N1, the tumor was so advanced and uh, the ex extended pleurectomy decortication is likely to leave an ineffective residual upper lobe and a chronic space problem, so he should be given extra pleural pneumonectomy. T4N1, the tumor was so advanced that no useful palliation can be achieved surgically or with the radiotherapy. The patient should enter a trial for immunotherapy. T4N2, uh, current chemotherapy only adds a matter of weeks to the median survival with major toxicity, so the patient should be offered best supportive care, allowing him to enjoy his limited remaining life. Thank you. Thank you very much. 30 seconds now for your answer and 30 seconds before we hear from uh, Team Americas as to their answer. Ten seconds to go. Closes and now over to Team Americas for your answer, please. We believe the best answer is number two. Um, the tumor was obviously very advanced and is highly likely to require uh, um, an extra pleural pneumonectomy because it would be technically very difficult to do an extended pleurectomy decortication and leave a space behind at the end of it. We don't agree with answers three or four um, as this patient is potentially resectable um, based on the imaging that we have at the moment and so should be offered curative treatment if possible. Uh, and we think that there's probably more evidence for that than evidence for the immunotherapy in this particular situation at this point in time. So there could be a little bit of controversy and a bit of difference across the Atlantic between uh, the different options that are available. So now we're going to go over to our uh, expert panel. Uh, I want you now to score the quality of the, uh, the scenario as presented, please. Frank. So we've got a five from Frank. It goes up to 10. Then from Thomas, a 10. Arvind has an eight, a 10, a nine, 10 from David. There's a five, a seven, and an eight, and an eight. Okay, so now on to uh, how good was the answer from Asia for the first question? So, Frank, the answer to Asia's question, your score, please. A bit of thought going into this one. Frank's gone for an eight, an eight, and nine. Arvind has nine, eight, an eight, an eight from David, nine, uh, a nine, an eight, and an eight from Stephen. Okay, our th uh, Third scoring is the answer from the Americas, please. So your score, Frank, we've got an eight, a nine, a 10 from Julia. We've got a nine, a seven, an eight, and a one. Now this is controversial. David has gone right down to a one. We've got an eight, an eight, a nine, and a 10. Right. So we're gonna see how that comes. Thanks very much. That'll, that'll make a difference to some of the scoring. So. No, that is the, uh, that's the, uh, all the questions for the first section. Uh, we're now going to have Frank to come over and present uh, the uh, correct answers uh, as dis uh, discussed by various members of the panel. Okay, well, here we are, lung cancer TNNM. So the first uh, question here, what is the correct clinical stage for this uh, patient with this uh, five centimeter uh, tumor? So the answer was number four, T2B, because that's uh, up to five centimeters is T2B, and it was N2 and M0. And the second question, uh, after induction chemotherapy, what is the uh, pathologic stage and resection status? So the uh, correct answer here was uh, answer three. Um, so the T2A uh, 
was a little over three centimeters, uh, still had positive N2 nodes. Uh, the R uncertain I will discuss a little bit. Um, so the next uh, uh, question related to thymic tumors and what are the, uh, this really has to do not so much with stage classification, but stage evaluation. How do you uh, decide what the stage is? And the uh, correct answer here was uh, the CT scan. Uh, that's really what we rely on primarily uh, for determining stage. Histology is not a stage classification. Um, and what was the pathologic stage? So this was involving uh, lung and pericardium, T3, involving some uh, prevascular lymph nodes, N1. And finally, the question regarding malignant pleural mesothelioma. So this patient did undergo resection, uh, was an extended pleurectomy decortication with actually quite good lung expansion, I might note. Um, and so the uh, correct answer here was uh, uh, T4, N1, N2. This tumor was very bulky uh, at multiple levels and uh, systemic chemotherapy was, uh, was given. And after the response to chemotherapy, the uh, answer was number one, um, complete resection by extended pleurectomy and decortication, macroscopic complete resection. So. Okay, thank you very much, Frank. We'll hear your comments, uh, your wrap-up in a minute, but uh, um, it's interesting to see maybe David Waller was right with that last answer. Uh, so now we're going to hear how well did the audience go. So can we just change over to the audience voting results? Uh, okay. Right, so for um, the first question, um, the, um, the audience went for number four which was the correct answer. And for the second question, the audience was split mainly between one and two, but in fact, three was the answer. Okay, the next question, uh, audience favored number one in particular, and that was correct. Um, was the audience right again in this case? Not too bad, not too bad at all. Now here we're split, we're split in this one, and uh, the audience wasn't, correct in everything, and there we go again. The audience was, uh, was correct in that one. And that's all those questions, is it not? Right, we move back, so uh, Frank, some take home messages, please. All right, uh, whoops. Okay, okay, so uh, just to review, uh, a few things, uh, this is the T classification, so this first tumor was uh, up to five centimeters, so T2B is uh, greater than four, but up to five centimeters. Uh, lymph nodes uh, involving the ipsilateral mediastinum are N2, um, M0, so that's pretty straightforward. Uh, and so that would end up being a, a stage uh, uh, three, three B patient. Um, now, there's classification of resection, R0, R1, R2, complete resection, microscopically incomplete and grossly incomplete. Now, if you look in the ISLAC staging manual, complete resection is also defined as it has to be negative margins and six, six lymph node stations should be uh, uh, assessed. Now, it's actually a little bit unclear in the manual whether it's six lymph nodes or six lymph node stations. That's written in a very ambiguous way. Of those lymph node stations, three should be N2, including a station seven node. But there is a little asterisk, and if you read a little further in the manual, it says that if a... Uh, node, uh, if a lobe-specific node uh, sampling has been done, if the nodes are negative, it can be considered an R0 resection regardless. So um, I think there's a little bit of controversy here. Uh, microscopically incomplete resection, positive margin, or extracapular node extension. Doesn't actually say anything about extracapular node extension with a large packet of fat around it, which you might view as negative margin, but that's not specified or pleural lavage cytology, and of course, grossly incomplete is uh, pretty obvious. 
Um, interestingly, extracapsular node extension comes up here as well without further explanation. Positive unresected nodes, that's fairly obvious, pleural pericardial nodules. Now, a proposed classification, this isn't actually official, but uncertain, and that would be if there's an inadequate number of nodes or stations sampled. I think this is a little bit difficult, though, because we really haven't defined very well. Are we talking about six nodes? Are we talking about six node stations? And when we're talking about number of nodes, I think it becomes difficult at times. Are you talking about pieces of nodes or complete nodes? So that's, uh, I think, left a little bit ambiguous. Uh, there's also a definition of the highest mediastinal node removed or sampled is positive. Um, so that is in this definition. So I think that is what the uh, team was thinking of when they said this is uh, uncertain. Um, I think you could argue a little bit about whether it was a complete lymphadenectomy, but I think that's not really part of the stage classification. If I stick to the stage classification of what's written in the TNM book, I think you could actually argue with those two answers that R0 or R uncertain both could be viewed as, as correct. Stage classification for thymic tumors, um, T3 involving the lung, T2 involving the pericardium, but T3, uh, since the lung was involved, uh, the pericardium is already included. Uh, there's a node map. These were N1 nodes. Uh, so this was T3, N1. And then finally, uh, stage classification for mesothelioma. Um, this was a uh, extensive tumor to start with, uh, and there were some evidence of some nodes involved. Um, and I'll uh, just uh, finish there, I think. Okay. okay. <clears throat> okay, thank you very much. So that, uh, that finishes our uh, section on... Uh